I've still got the stinking cold and the room's a mess behind me. You know what? I don't care. We're going to be looking at my screen in a minute anyway. Right, so the other product I have to review today is called Kaz Type. And if you are looking for a touch typing program but fed up with BBC Dance Mat, then give Kaz Type a try. See if your students can learn to touch type the letters in just 90 minutes. It's been approved by the British Dyslexia Association and assured by City and Guild, so this is a, something a little bit different. I learned touch typing at school, and it was a Monday afternoon option block. I was carted off to the local college uh, to learn on manual typewriters, which swallowed your fingers and would very definitely eat nail extensions. <clears throat> As a 13, 14 year old at the time with relatively small hands, I never really got to grips with it and I couldn't just put my hands on the home keys and move my fingers, I actually had to lift my wrist up and move my whole arm. Um, unfortunately, that was a habit that was really hard to break when we got to using electronic typewriters and uh, I still use a combination of both now, so I had a bit of touch typing, a bit of looking at the keys and my mishmash method, but it works for me. Anyway, unlike BBC Dance Mat, which is free, CasType does have costs associated with it, but you are paying for a product which has been approved and works. An online licence for an individual is uh, for home use is £24.95. A school licence for five users is £90 with discounts for additional licences. Um, or you could even complete a City and Guild's accredited typing course starting at £75 a user, which might be useful for some of your secondary aged pupils if you want them to come out with some qualifications at the end of it. CasType gave me access to their adult and child versions and I'm going to show you on screen in a moment their child version. See you in a moment. Okay, so I'm going to my browser and if anybody wonders I use Opera as my browser. It doesn't track my data and it has a nice large thing so I can find my websites quickly and easily. However, I am actually going to type in the website that I want today. So I'm going to go to castype.com there. And this is the page that opens up. It tells me about the company, tells me about what's going on there. So I've got my tabs as usual at the top there. I've got a couple of icons here that I can click to find out about Castype for the various different purposes. And scrolling down, it tells me that they have over a million people that use it. Uh, it's City and Guilds Assured that they have an SEN Dyslexia edition developed with the Dyslexia Research Trust um, and it's got down there some of the awards they've been nominated for or people they've done research with. These are a couple of the characters that are involved and it talks about accelerated learning, it being a total system and brain balancing along with who they are working with right down at the bottom there. So if I scroll back up to the top I'm not going to go through all those little tabs there. If you guys want to, you can go along to their website and have a look. But we are actually going to go and click on Course Login. And you will discover I have already saved my login details because I'm really naughty. That was just so that I don't look like a numpty on screen when I forget what they are again. So clicked on that one and I have my adult edition and my junior edition. I'm actually going to use the junior edition today select my keyboard that's my first option so I'm going to click the UK flag although I actually have a Mac with an American keyboard doesn't actually matter because the QWERTY setup is the same on both of them it's just if I want to use punctuation I really need to switch to the other I've then got three options I can either do this with sound as a text only version or with audio description and for the purpose of this I'm actually going to click CAS with sound I'll just unblock that for it. Okay, so we've got this lovely little tune playing in the background. I'm going to turn it down just for a moment so that it's not drowning my voice out completely because I can't shout over it today. And I've got here, you can see user guides, my results, admin, and the logout button. And I can see that I've got my flying start, my basics, <coughs> applying those basics learning my punctuation keys and then a speed builder. So flying start is uh, teaching me how to sit at the keyboard or the computer. 
we go. Uh, so, secrets of how this works, how to use the course, the bare essentials, how to sit at the computer, etc. Which I'm not going to do today, but I am going to show you the basics. We're going to use touch typing and the keys there. Um, if you are wondering why part of the screen is blurred out, CalsType did ask me to only show you the first sentence that is on there, which is if Mike jived. So I'm going to give that one a click and I'm going to open the volume up just a little. Just to remind you how to move around the program, click on Kaz's wings to go forward or back. Click on Kaz's beak and I will repeat what I have just said. And if you click on Kaz's feet, you will exit the section. So there are two people's voices that you actually hear within the program. That's the female voice and there's a male voice as well. Uh, you can see that Kaz there is this little character. He sits in the bottom right hand corner on the screen and it's moved me on automatically now anyway. So she's now telling me that I've got my first phrase this to learn. This is the first phrase you will be learning if Mike jives. And this is what you are going to teach your fingers to do. So I should just turn the Reach volume up. With the second finger of your right hand and press the I gently. Now with the first finger of your left hand, press the letter F, which is, of course, one of the home keys. Type if again now, using the second finger of the right hand, and go up from the home key K and press the letter I. And then with the first finger of the left hand, lightly tap the F key. Do this again until you have a row of ifs across the top of your screen. Try not to look at the keys once you have learnt the positioning and type slowly and steadily. Don't worry if you made a mistake or two, it's to be expected at this stage. Okay, so this is where I had the, my first small issue with the programme. Um, or oh, two issues I should say. Uh, the first one is that I find that male voice is very echoey. I am using the speakers on my um, Mac, however even with my headset on uh, I do find his voice echoes an awful lot. Uh, it might just be me that has a problem with it. Um, the other thing though is you will see that I have ooh, typed a few too many I's and F's there. Um, I have typed this lots and lots of times now and if you remember when I was on that first page it jumped me through the program and told me where I was going whereas now it seems to have stopped telling me. Um, and when I first did this I completely filled that typing area until I realised that Kaz was down here in the corner with her wings that I can click on. Under the letters is the on. space bar which is operated with your right thumb. You should be able to reach it without taking your fingers off the home key. So I'm going to turn that right the way down there because he's continuing to talk to me to tell me how to type if and put a space into this. And again, it will let me continue doing it. Not a major problem. I think the first time, especially if I was working with a child, um, I would probably want to sit and supervise them doing this to make sure that they do understand that they can click on Kaz's wing to move forward through the programme or even to exit the programme if they needed to. Anyway, um, I'm not going to take you all the way through that because that would be really unfair, but it does take you through uh, if Mike jived, how to type those letters, where to find the M and the K and the E, um, and then to actually put that in centre. So I'm going to come back to it in a couple of seconds, so if you just let me whiz through. So now we've made it to the end, we can now type the whole sentence if Mike jived. Now, as I said when I was doing the intro to this, I'm very naughty because um, I tend not to touch type. Um, and really I ought to and I didn't actually read it properly the first time I did this because that doesn't say if Mike jived, if Mike jived, if Mike jived, if Mike jived it actually says if Mike jived, if Mike jived, Mike jived, jived, if Mike, if jived, Mike, if Mike jived if you want to confuse me it just managed it um, so I did make a mistake the first time I actually tried doing this um, but that's my own fault for not touch typing in the proper manner. Mike jived. Um, however, just as before, it would actually, if I wanted to, let me continue typing. It doesn't stop me. Take a short break if you need one. 
then move on to the next phrase. And I love move this bit then. here because I have got my little character dancing there in front of me and it then flicks me onto this screen and I can move on to the next phrase. Okay. <clears throat> Very, very similar, just do it, it allows me to practice those typing skills. This one, again, like I said, lets me learn the shift key, the numbers, the punctuation keys. And then I've got a daily practice to build my speed and accuracy. If I go up to the top here, you can see my results. Um, so I first got the program on the 17th of January and I did have the keyboard resting on my knee, that's my excuse, um, and I was typing at 70 words per minute with an accuracy of 92% um, and I tried it again today, the 1st of February, uh, with an accuracy of 97% and a typing speed apparently of 89 words per minute. My excuse is my husband was talking to me at the time because I know I actually type much faster than that under normal circumstances. However, that is there for you to use. So you could, in theory, measure progress of students. You could get them to do a typing test at the beginning of the programme and they're looking at the letters and the rest of it. This one is actually quite good because it um, won't let you move on to the next letter if you've typed one wrong. Pings at you. Um, so you could get that measure at the beginning and then get them to do that perhaps once a month or something to see their progress through the system. Okay, so we are looking at the admin screen from CAS Online and there is the option there to change my password which I don't want to do however I can also change the preferences within the program so um, you can see I can select a filter colour for the background here so perhaps purple I can select my font colour and I have the whole uh, range of colours available to me um, I can choose my font face so Lexi Readable is a pretty nice one there. Um, and I can also choose, choose that font size along with the keyboard. And this has been um, designed in conjunction with the British Dyslexia Association. They have recommended those choices that go in there uh, based on 25 years of research. And this is probably a fundamental part of the programme. However, most kids, if they're anything like me, will choose their favourite colours rather than the ones that actually work for them. But at least you have the option of coming back into those admin settings and changing them at a later date if necessary.